you can easily use EF Core with that domain driven approach. Newer versions of EF Core plays very nicely together with proper domain models and you typically still see .NET developers think that they have to cater for EF Core and compromise their domain model just to make life easier, but this is absolutely not the case. It really only comes down to having persistence ignoring domain classes and creating EF Core uh, configuration classes. But first, let's take a look at some of the bad practices that you might experience. Persistence logic easily creeps into the domain model through attributes, but the model should ideally be completely ignorant as to how it's later being stored in a database. The four most obvious bad practices in this illustration are uh, using attributes that convey some kind of infrastructure concern, like the name of the table, max length, and column name. Uh, the use of public properties. A common misconception in EF Core is that it requires mutable properties, but that's not the case. You can easily use private, uh, private setters. And having a mutable list should ideally be I read only or enumerable so that you can reassign it and add garbage data to it. And obviously having no constructor is a very bad idea. As I've said before, domain models should never care about infrastructure concerns. A domain model's job is only to capture the domain specific knowledge and protect its uh, invariants. For instance, if an author's name is required, then don't use attributes to mark that just pass in the value through the constructor and that way you always ensure that um, the author will actually have a name, for example. The same goes for lists. Always encapsulate your list in a private read-only field unless you actually do allow it to be reassigned or if you don't care about the data that is added to the list. Okay, so let's take a look at the domain model we're going to configure with EF Core. I've quickly written all the domain classes so you don't have to watch me do it. We have an author status, which is an enum. We have an address, which is, or is gonna be an owned type, the encapsulated uh, books list, and just a quick overview of the uh, address class and its properties. And the book class, notice that the book class is actually taking another class in the constructor without having a default constructor. I know configuring this may be difficult, but it doesn't have to be. Let's look at how you can easily configure these domain classes with EF Core. Here we have the regular old DB context, nothing special about that one. Instead of doing all the class configuration directly in DB uh, context, we'll make separate configuration classes for that purpose. And to do that, you use the apply configurations from assembly, which basically scans the assembly for these specific classes that I'm about to make. A configuration class must inherit or implement the iEntity type configuration. And here I'm just giving it a uh, explicitly stating the table name, though that is not required. And because the author ID is, uh, it doesn't have a public setter and it's set during the, the object construction, I'm going to have to do this has key. And just a bit of basic property configuration and for the status because it's an enum and I want the string value I have to do this has conversion and yeah it will just store the string value and convert that back once I pull it off the database then we have the address and for this one I'm just going to set the properties and I'm going to say it's uh, an owned type by saying this uh, builder.owns1 address. And yeah, we're just going to set up these these properties with some ha has mac lengths and give them column names. And then the books, because this is a um, encapsulated list, meaning we have a private field read-only, I will have to say like, this is the name and access it through the field instead. Similar to the address, we'll set up the books, but this time with owns many, making it a one-to-many relationship. 
Because the book class doesn't have an ID of its own, we made a composite key using the author's ID and the book title. As you noticed earlier, the book required a book type through its constructor, and this is exactly one of those scenarios that can make people so frustrated that they start compromising their domain classes. But it's quite simple to get around. We just need to use the has conversion. And if the book type was more complex, you may want to serialize the object before storing it. And when you receive it back, you will just deserialize it. And then we will ignore the genre because we received that one from the book's type. And now we can create the migration for, for this uh, project, but we will actually see it fail because we don't have any startup project. So essentially we need one of these uh, design time factories. Creating a design time factory allows us to use EF core commands without a startup project. This is absolutely great for CTCI pipelines, so the database is entirely independent of the application. You'll need some way of receiving a connection string. So just make use of the standard I configuration. You can then load variables through a key vault, the environment or an app settings file when you do local development. We just need to install a few nuggets and then we're gonna grab the configuration.json so we can read the app settings.json file. Let's create the app settings.json file and give it a connection string called SQL. Last thing before we can actually create the migration, we'll just need to write the um, connection string and then we're set. So let's create the migration and see how it actually looks. There is an authors table with the address columns and the books table has no separate ID. Instead, it's using this composite key that we defined earlier. So now you know exactly how to model your domain classes and wire them up with EF Core without having to compromise.